There are lots of places in this world where animals like foxes, raccoons, and coyotes aren't really a problem. But if you have livestock you need to protect, they can be a big problem in your area. Whenever feasible, I recommend livestock guardian dogs to keep your animals safe. But sometimes, dogs aren't enough, and in some situations it's not a good idea to get a livestock guardian dog. My dogs do a lot to keep predators away, but sometimes I still need to trap one. Foxes especially are bad, because they can go right through the field fence. Occasionally, I'll have a fox learn it can run out, grab a chicken near the fence, and get back through the field fence before the dogs can get them. Then the dogs just run into the fence. I've personally seen foxes go through this fence like they were going through air. It didn't slow it at all. Humane traps are the best. Even if you are so mad at whatever animal that you want to trap that you don't care if it gets hurt, there's always the possibility of some innocent animal or somebody's loved pet or a person getting caught in the trap. First, I'm going to demonstrate the trigger method of my trap. The size of the cage and the materials you use will depend on what kind of animal you want to trap. You can make the trap however big you want, and the trigger method should still work provided the sliding door isn't too big or heavy. Okay, first thing to understand is the trigger mechanism of the trap. You can build about whatever size trap you want, but about trigger mechanism. Yeah. I build this box. It's supposed to be a little hard to open. Because I don't want any unintended targets getting to the trigger mechanism. I have this trap screwed down with four screws. And right here I have a hole that goes through the trap. This wire goes through it. And then it goes all the way out the bottom here. Okay, now I have the trap set. Just set like you regularly would a trap like this. But this wire that I have going through, I'm going to pull it just a little. Ow, that was loud. But now my purpose isn't for anything to get in this trap. That's why I have this box. And I have this wire in front. Don't want anything. I don't want any birds or squirrels or anything to get to that trap. That's just the trigger mechanism for a humane trap. I'll put the box with the rat trap in it on top of this board that I have kind of towards the back of the cage trap. Got to screw it down really well on the board. The wire end will need to point towards the opening where the animal will come in. Okay, I got the wire through this hole. Got the wire that goes down. And then tied to that wire, the string that goes to that platform. And right here, have the trap set. You can see here we got the string. It's tied on to the rat trap, the bar in there. I'm not going to stick my finger in very close. And then the string goes to this piece of PVC pipe. It goes through the hole in this board. Okay. Definitely want to keep this closed, wired shut. Now to show you how this is supposed to work. An animal comes in, puts its foot right there, that pulls the string, that pulls the trap, and then, when it pulls this, cause the trap to spring, which pulled the rope, which pulled this out of the hole in here, and it's down. Okay, I got this pipe, this PVC pipe. On this other PVC pipe that I've got in half to help it slide more easily. I've got a little bit of a PVC pipe 
cut really thin to go in the board, help it slide, and then here's this, which is in there pretty firm. They want a little slack on the rope to help the trap, when it's sprung, build up speed. So. Yeah, to talk a little more about this platform, it on it's just an old junky piece of wood. Got it on a PVC pipe and wired on just with little wires so that it can kind of pivot back and forth easily. And these rubber band things here kind of help keep it in place. They're not always necessary, but okay. Let's pretend I'm the animal. I mean, in the trap. There's some kind of bait on the other side of the trap. And I put my paw right here and whoops! Now I can't get out. So, I'll just have to stay here. Hey, this is an optional for being able to put bait in towards the back and that was how I managed to get out of the trap. Because <laughs> it's actually kind of hard to open that from the inside. You have to be able to pull it pretty hard because it can get jammed in there. Let this helps see better how it can pivot. The animal steps platform right here which pulls the string which pulled the thing on the end of the rat trap and causes it to go whap. You're trapped. Well, I hope this has given you enough of an idea as to how the trigger mechanism works. I'll try to make more videos with more details later, maybe more step-by-step -step instructions, but I hope you got the idea. I like to make these traps as humane as I possibly can since I often just catch my own dogs or other things I might not want to harm. I've done pretty well with this trap. Here's one of the foxes I caught with it. He's fixing to go to a wildlife center to run free away from my chickens and away from anybody's chickens. I used a chicken that died of natural causes to bait this trap hoping to catch a coyote. And I caught it. Yeah, I got a game cam near the trap so I could monitor it. That way if I ever just find that it was sprung but nothing in it, I can see if maybe something just bumped it or if I caught something and it got loose. Well, with the coyote, it did get loose. When I came there the next morning, just this little hole that it was able to make in the wire was all it took that it was able to get out. Now, I thought the twisted wire from the fence would be strong enough, and it was strong enough for the fox and raccoons and most creatures, but one strong enough for the coyote, although it was in the trap for several hours, according to the game cam. That was why on that latest trap, I'd put stronger wire over this kind of wire, so if I catch another coyote, it won't be able to get out. I really doubt I'll ever catch this coyote again, but hopefully it won't come around again either. Stronger wire makes the trap heavier, which is a downside. If we could come up with some lighter weight material, that would be better, but I can still pull it around with a wagon. Thanks for watching. Again, I hope this helps. And this generates enough interest, I have time, I can try to do a more step-by-step -step instructional video for making different size traps. But in the meantime, hopefully at least I made the um, trigger method clear.